time for another Orcs and Goblins update, and I finished my first Mangler Penguin, and I'm quite happy with it. Uh, if you read the the Orcs and Goblins book, um, it'll tell you that a Mangler Squig is actually several, one, two or more uh, crazed cave squigs chained together. It's not supposed to be one big giant model. And so I always took my penguins and, and based them, but this is what I came up with. Here is my Mangler Penguin. Let's just start talking about some of these features. Uh, first of all, this chain. This chain is just a cheap craft chain I got at Michael's. Uh, but it's soft enough where I'm able to open it up and, and close the links so I can adjust the size and, and do whatever I want to with it. So that's what I did. And so the, all the penguins are chained together, and they're pinned to the base. Uh, this one's kind of leaning forward. This one's going to be jumping up in the air a little bit. It's going to be off the rocks a little bit. Like he's leaping forward. Uh, the handler is, of course, the Night Goblin boss from the Battle for Skull Pass box. He's actually magnetized because after the Mangler Squig hits the first model, first unit, um, it starts moving in a random direction. So this guy comes off. He's got a little hook, paper clip hook on the front of the Squig here, kind of like the, he's holding the chain in his mouth. So he comes off. And oh, and this chain is also fair. So what I can do is stick the chain to the magnet after the guy's off. Um, of course, I I saw this on the GW website. They did some Night Goblin modeling. They had a bunch of green stuff, little magic mushrooms. I just had to do that. I mean, it was it's really going to add a lot to the base, especially if I do some OSL with them. I haven't decided yet, uh, but I got a good variety of uh, shapes and sizes of magic mushrooms on the base. And this big hole here is going to be um, basically a little pond. Water is probably going to be ice. Um, I'll just, I don't have any water effects, so I'm probably just going to use the gloss coat again like I did with my other basing project. And I'm just going to put some blues in there and then cover it up with the gloss coat and call it a day. It's going to be like a water water feature or ice feature. This guy's magnetic. Stick him on. Stick the chain in the guy's mouth. Or kind of looks like it's on the... That way the chain's on, in the squig's mouth. He's the one who's holding onto the chain. But yeah, so this is my first Mangler Penguin. And very, very happy with how it came out. Especially like the magic mushrooms. That was a, I wish I would have thought of that myself, honestly, because that really adds a lot to the base. But essentially, I mean, it's just basically basing the models I already have. Um, you might remember these little tiny little polar bears that I bought, I was going to try, I bought thinking they would be big enough for the chariots. And I came up with a, a great idea, and that's to use these guys for something. I can use them for uh, cave squigs. I can use them for squig hoppers. Get a night goblin mounted on top of the polar bear. Uh, baby polar bear hoppers. Uh, or something like that. But I think I can use these guys where I originally thought I was going to, they were just going to get uh, thrown in a box in the bottom of the closet or something. But uh, I think they're perfect sized for something else. I think uh, I've seen a couple of people play the squig hoppers. They seem to do pretty pretty decently. They got a lot of they can put out a lot of damage. I'm thinking a unit of polar bear hoppers would be kinda cool. Uh, I haven't decided yet exactly what to do with these guys, but now I've got some ideas so I don't, I'm not gonna be stuck with stuck with them. Uh, for the chariot, I have decided to go with, uh, I haven't started it yet obviously, but I decided to go with a, a weathered wood look. So I've been doing some researching on uh, model railroad sites and for to make the, the, the grayish uh, weathered wood look and so that's what this is going to look like. Um, I had some examples. In fact, I'll put up a picture at the end of the video of the two test samples I had. Uh, I got my prize from SMA, which included a weathering paint set, and there's a color in there called Grimy Black, uh, which was recommended on for, F for one of the techniques. Uh, so Grimy Black and then some pigments to kind of give it the mold, 
and color, some green and brown pigments for color, and then a dry brush of white. And that's probably all I'm going to do because I think it turned out really well. And yeah, as soon as I get an adapter for the because Badger Airbrush uses a different size uh, from the um, air hose I have. So as soon as I get uh, the adapter, I'll show off my Badger Airbrush. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's my uh, hobby update. Just a little addendum here is the uh, weathering techniques. I tried on the wood. These are some extra bits from the chariot. Uh, the top one is the grimy black and then a couple colors of pigments and then just a dry brush of white. And the bottom one is white primer with a couple coats of black wash. And that's it. Uh, I'm definitely going with the top one. I think it looks better. I uh, probably need a little less white, a little more pigments. I'm not sure. I'll have to play with it some. Uh, but of course these were come from model railroaders so model railroading is always a great resource uh, when trying to uh, do your minis and don't uh, forget to check out that kind of stuff. This is the first place I went when I was looking for weathered wood because I knew they were going to uh, give a lot of good advice. So uh, that's going to be the chariot. It's going to give that nice old weathered bleached out kind of mildewy wood look. And yeah, so that's going to look great. Talk to you guys later.